on now. Great. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Science and Data. Um, so up now we've got Mark Harris. Um, sorry, I'm just going to bio. Mark is a principal system software engineer working on RAPIDS. Mark has had 20 years of experience developing software for GPUs ranging from graphics and games to physically based simulations to parallel algorithms and high performance computing. Um, and that's what he's going to be talking to us about today. It's on QDF, RAPIDS GPU Accelerated Data Frame Library. Cool. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Rachel. Hi, everybody. Um, just a little caveat. I'm a little out of my element here. I'm not a data scientist, and I also would call my Python programming at the level of dabbler. So um, let me talk to you about Python data science. Um, uh, so actually, what I'm going to talk about is uh, Rapids, which is an open source um, suite of packages for accelerating data science on GPUs, which are graphics processing units. Uh, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about what GPUs are or about CUDA, which is the parallel computing platform for NVIDIA GPUs that we run on. Um, but there's a talk after mine by Varun, who will, will cover a lot of that, hopefully. So um, stick around for that. So the part I'm going to focus on mostly is uh, a GPU accelerated data frame library called QDF. So um, the goal of RAPIDS is to accelerate data science on GPUs end to end. And so when I say end to end, I mean uh, from loading the data sets into memory, preparing data, training machine learning models, uh, all the way through to visualizing the results. So um, the RAPID suite comprises a number of components, including uh, the data frame library, QDF, um, which also includes a module for I.O. called QIO, uh, a machine lar learning library called QML, a graph analytics library, QGraph, um, and there's also a visualization component called QCrossFilter. Um, and then there's interoperability with uh, popular Python-based deep learning frameworks uh, like Py PyTorch. Um, so uh, if, you, if we rewind, say, a decade or so um, to the early days of big data, um, uh, Hadoop came along, and it, and it allowed people to scale up their uh, data applications uh, or scale out their data applications to, to a large number of nodes, achieving much higher throughput. Um, but it had a, a number of inefficiencies in particular that if you have multiple phases in your workflow, in this case, we have like a database query, some ETL. If you're not familiar with that phrase, it's, it pops up a lot in these slides. It's extract, transform, load. But it basically is an old database term that today gets applied to data preparation and uh, feature engineering and things like that. Uh, and then machine learning training. Um, in between each of these phases, Hadoop applications would have to write data out to disk in HDFS and read it back into the next phase, et cetera. And that was the source of a lot of uh, inefficiency. Um, a few years ago, uh, uh, along came Apache Spark, which was a big step forward, which um, takes the point of view that if we keep all the data in memory um, and distribute it and in, in parcel it out across the nodes, then we can get much better efficiency running, keeping the data in, in memory and just passing it directly uh, between the different phases. Uh, and that led to much higher efficiency and better scaling. Um, now, when we started uh, on, down the road towards accelerating data science on GPUs, um, we looked around and there was actually a fairly rich ecosystem of different components for accelerating different parts of data science on GPUs, um, but it was very disparate. And so while you can get acceleration by doing the computation on GPUs, each of these components would require um, reading data into the GPU, then re writing it out of the GPU, um, which uh, meant that it wasn't as efficient as it could be. So just to, here's a 
a crude cartoon of that where on the left we have the CPU and on the right the GPU. Um, if you imagine you have a couple of different components in your machine or in your data science workflow, um, we call them app A and app B, then app A loads data onto the GPU and then processes it really fast, but then has to copy the data back to the CPU memory, convert it into a format for application B, which then loads it in, back into GPU memory, processes it really fast, and then reads the data back. And so all the gains that we get from optimizing the computation on the GPU in each of these components is largely lost by all this copy and convert. Um, so ideally, we'd get rid of all those conversions. And uh, so the question is, how do we do that? Um, well, around the same time, this same copy and convert uh, problem was happening not just on GPUs, but in, in data science in general, because there were a lot of different tools that people are using and um, that didn't share necessarily the same data formats. And so Apache Arrow is a project which aims to provide a common in-memory columnar data format um, and a library of functionality such as parquet loaders and things like that, which enables different technologies and different systems to share data in memory uh, and eliminate all this copying and converting. And so uh, Rapids um, builds on Apache by using this format as uh, its representation for columnar data. Um, and so by, by keeping the data in memory, um, we can eliminate all the GPU memory reads and writes, or a lot of the copies and conversions, and get much higher performance. And um, this translates to real world performance. Um, so this, there's a lot on this slide, but uh, let me summarize it. Um, uh, the left two graphs are showing two different components. There's the data loading and preparation. This is using QDF, which you can think of as similar to pandas. Um, uh, and uh, the middle one is uh, XGBoost training. So this is gradient boosted trees. We're training a model. Um, and on the right is end to end. So this is the left two plus the um, conversion needed to get the data into XGBoost format, which is called a D matrix. Um, and the take home is that uh, if you look at a similar cost point, so the DGX2 is uh, an NVIDIA server that has 16 um, high-end Tesla V100 GPUs and uh, dual Xeon CPUs, um, the similar cost point in terms of cloud data processing would be about 40 CPU nodes uh, with you know, eight vCPUs each. Um, and so uh, at that point, the total cost, cost of ownership or the speed up is you know, over 12x here. So the total cost of ownership is, is uh, reduced by a factor of 10 about. Um, the example here, it's a 200 gigabyte CSV data set. Uh, this data preparation includes things like joins, filtering, um, group by operations and then the XGBoost training um, is also accelerated on the GPUs. Um, but none of this matters if you have to change your code. And so it, the other main focus of Rapids is to accelerate familiar Python a APIs. So we build on the existing PyData open source ecosystem. So libraries you're familiar with, Pandas uh, for analytics, scikit-learn for machine learning, Network X for graph analytics, et cetera. And we provide um, uh, similar APIs or compatible APIs wherever possible uh, that are GPU accelerated. So QDF for analytics, QML for machine learning, QGraph for graph analytics. Um, now, for the rest of the talk, I'm going to focus mostly on QDF, uh, since that's the component that, that I work on. Um, and then I'll give us a really brief summary of QML at the end. Um, OK, so why GPU accelerate ETL? That's effectively what we're accelerating when we, um, when we build a data frame library. Um, we talked to a lot of data scientists, and we found that 
they don't spend most of their time training machine learning models. Uh, they spend a lot of their time, most of their time, um, preparing data. And uh, one of our engineers drew this cartoon. It's kind of tongue in cheek, but um, on the left, uh, you have a traditional CPU powered workflow, say using pandas or something like that. Um, and the data scientist starts in the morning by writing some code to load their data, engineer some features, clean it up, et cetera. They start it running. It's a big data set, so they go and get a coffee. Um, maybe come back. It's not done. They get another coffee. Um, then they realize, crap, I forgot one of the features. So I change my code a little bit and restart it and wait. Um, and then, uh-oh. There, was an unexpected, there were unexpected null values or missing data somewhere. I need to catch that. So I have to change the code again, restart it, et cetera. So it's not just a fire and forget process. It's an iterative process. And if we can accelerate that weight um, when processing large data sets, then data scientists can work at their speed of thought rather than um, uh, uh, you know, waiting on the waiting on their computer. Um, so, lib, so QDF is two components. There's un, underneath is libqdf, that's what I work on, um, which is a CUDA C++ library, uh, which provides um, a low-level API to accelerate various uh, data frame operations, such as element-wise arithmetic, um, filtering, aggregations, um, uh, group buys, joins, et cetera, sorting. Um, and it's built in C++, as I said, and uses NVIDIA CUDA for the parallel functions that run on the GPU, uh, as well as a library called Thrust, which is a parallel algorithms library. Um, and on top of that it is QDF, which is a Python package, which provides uh, an API that is pandas-like. It's not to the letter compatible with pandas, because there are some decisions that the pandas API makes that would cost performance on the GPU. Um, uh, and it basically provides an interface to that lower level data frame library. It allows you to create GPU data frames from NumPy arrays or from pandas data frames or from PyRO tables. And it even provides um, user defined functions uh, by just-in-time compiling Python functions using a package called Numba, which is a just-in-time compiler for Python, which can compile for CPUs or GPUs. Um, so because this is the part of, that I work on, it, I'll just spend a, a little bit talking about some of the challenges that we have to deal with when building a library like this. So the aim is CUDA accelerated GPU performance, but with the flexibility and the breadth of functionality of a library like Pandas. Um, so we have to bridge a dynamic language to um, static languages, C++ and CUDA C++. Um, and we need to, uh, this is a challenge because we have to support operations on tables with a broad range of data types, arbitrary number of columns. And so that means it's important that we have flexible runtime dispatch on different types, um, which is something that's natural in a, in a dynamic language like Python. But um, in a statically compiled language like C++, you need to work hard to make sure that this doesn't cause you to suffer extreme compile times and extreme binary sizes. Because you know if it takes eight hours to compile the library or um, the library is a gigabyte or 10 gigabytes, then just because of the, the different combinations of types that we have to support, then that's, not a, that's a non-starter. Um, we have to, support, have to support missing and invalid data. So there's this thing called a null bit mask. Um, which uh, uh, is just causes all kinds of headaches, but it, it basically enables us to support um, data sets that come in with missing data or, or NANs or et cetera. Um, and enabling Python user-defined functions um, to operate on 
data frames on the GPU. Um, we're developing some interesting solutions on that by combining just-in-time compilation using Numba uh, and injecting the assembly that we get from that into C++, which we can then just-in-time compile for the GPU. And then a, another major challenge is high-performance memory management. We're dealing with um, uh, very large data sets on, across multiple GPUs, and so we need to, uh, well, and also um, there's high frequency of allocation and deallocation because often the, the data frames are immutable, so when you pre perform an operation on it, you get a new data frame out, and so we need to be able to do that efficiently, so we've built a, a, um, a high-performance sub-allocator on top of CUDA to enable that. Um, just some micro benchmarks for QDF. This is um, single GPU speed up compared to pandas. Uh, all the bars are speed ups, um, so GPU versus CPU. Uh, and the blue is a larger data frame. So two columns of 100 million rows versus two columns of 10 million rows. I think they're all double precision floats or 64 bit floats. Um, and you, so you can see speed ups from uh, 30 to 60x on large data frames. This is for group by, uh, merge, which is like a, a join, um, and sort. Oh, and it's running on NVIDIA DGX1, which is a, a server, it's a 2U server that has eight Tesla GPUs. We're just using one of them for this, these benchmarks, and it has Intel Xeon CPUs. Um, QDF also provides string support. String support is really important for a lot of data sets and a lot of analysis. Um, we're currently at Rapids version 0 0.8, and uh, so we currently have regular expression support. We have element-wise string operations like splitting and finding, uh, concatenation, et cetera. Uh, and we can also do group buys and joins and sorting on, on string columns in data frames. And in the future, we'll be adding a lot more string support and improving it. We're going to be combining the, the current QStrings library, which is the way we implement strings, as part of libqdf so that we get better integration and reduce code dupl duplication. Um, we're going to be optimizing performance, improving compatibility, and uh, improving our support for categorical string columns. Um, and another big part of uh, accelerating data frames is accelerating the I.O. So being able to load different file formats into GPU memory and do it fast. Um, so the example here is showing comparing loading a 2 gigabyte or 1.9 gigabyte uh, CSV file. It's the taxi uh, trip data set um, using pandas versus using QDF. And it's uh, about a, um, well, 29 seconds on the and pandas and two seconds in QDF. Um, we also have a CSV writer. Um, we have a Parquet reader, an ORC reader, JSON, and then in the next release in, uh, this month will be an Avro reader. I think it's already merged, and uh, an HDF5 reader in version 0 0.10 in October. So the key to getting this performance is to accelerate both the compression, if it's there, I think in this CSV example, there's no compression, and also parsing and doing that all on the GPU. Um, so Rapids enables you to scale up to from CPUs to GPUs, uh, the Pi Data ecosystem effectively, um, Pandas, Scikit-Learn. You can also accelerate NumPy using a package called QPy, which is from part of, uh, by the folks who do Chainer. Um, and Numba is another big part of that. But we also want to be able to scale out so that we can handle real big data problems. And so to do that, we're leveraging Dask, which is a, a package, a Python package for distributed computing, which can scale from, from to all the cores of your laptop or to all the nodes in your cluster. And with Rapids, uh, we can use it to scale to all the GPU accelerated nodes in your cluster. Uh, and combined with a, another package called OpenUCX, which is a, an interface to hardware networking transports, such as um, TCP, uh, well, 
um, InfiniBand, NVLink, which is NVIDIA's interconnect between GPUs and things like that. So that way we can scale up efficiently um, and not be bottlenecked by communication. Okay, I just want to give a quick overview of QML. So QML um, is another library like QDF. It has a Python interface. In this case, it's intended to be um, largely compatible with scikit-learn, so familiar to um, PyData users. Uh, and uh, it has, it's built on a, um, a CUDA substrate, so a suite of CUDA custom algorithms, uh, as well as calls into the rich set of existing CUDA libraries, like um, linear solvers and linear algebra libraries. Um, so we have a lot of algorithms listed here. Currently, most of these are single GPU, and a few of them are multi-GPU. That's as of Rapid 0.8. Uh, we're basically gradually adding more algorithms, adding more parallelism to multiple GPUs, and then also scaling those to multiple nodes with multiple GPUs. Um, just as an example of what I mean when we say that the, the APIs are familiar, this is a really simple example using sklearn's um, make moons data set um, and pandas so we basically call make moons and then create a pandas data frame and then use that as input to sklearn's dbscan um, and so we call dbscan.fit and dbscan.predict and you can see the output here with the different colored points that are clustered um, so to run this on the GPU is as simple in this case as switching from pandas to QDF um, and switching from sklearn to QML. Um, and the obligatory benchmarks, um, these are, again, single GPU speed ups. As I said, it's still early days for QML. So most of the things that we have today are single GPU, but we're rapidly adding multi-GPU acceleration for even um, for better speed ups and more scaling. And so here you can see, depending on the algorithm between um, say 5x up to over 100x speed up versus a sklearn. Um, the one on the right, I think they're separated because uh, for dbscan and knn um, running, the, the data sets are smaller because running data sets of millions of elements on these would, on the CPU would be, would take a, a very long time. So. Um, okay, how do you get started with Rapids? Um, Rapids is entirely open source, uh, so all the code is on GitHub. Um, there's a, a website home for Rapids, rapids.ai, where you can go to find uh, information uh, and links out to, to whatever you need. The source is on GitHub, as I said, under the Rapids AI organization. Um, so you'd go to rapidsai slash qdf if you were interested in, the, in looking at the source for qdf, for example. Um, there are also conda packages, so you don't have to build from source. There are conda packages under the rapidsai, um, I forget what they call it, channel or org or whatever. And uh, also um, containers. So if you're using containers, you can get pre-built containers um, from either Docker Hub or from the NVIDIA GPU Cloud Container Registry. Um, documentation are at docs, is at docs.rapids.ai. Um, there's even tutorials like 10 minutes to QDF, which is analogous to 10 minutes to pandas, which you might have seen before. And again, it, it's an open source um, endeavor. And so if you're interested, you can get involved either with the Rapids projects or with any of the, these other projects like Apache Arrow, Dask, et cetera. And thanks a lot. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Mark. Okay, okay, cool. Thanks, Mark. No, um, one over there. Oh. Yep, yeah. cool. Questions, we've got plenty of time for questions. Okay. Thanks, really informative. Your uh, increase in speeds were relative to a uh, particular 
device that had a bunch of Tensor, or sorry, um, what they? Tesla um, yeah. modules. What if I just happen to have a 1080 on my machine? Am I likely to get a benefit from using QDF? Sure. Um, well, it also depends on how big your problem is, of course. So if your problem is big enough, um, then yeah, if you've got a 1080, it's probably going to accelerate it um, quite a bit anyway. It, you don't have to have the top of the line uh, Tesla because CUDA, which is what we built on, runs on all NVIDIA GPUs. So great question. Uh, at the very end, there was a slide that mentioned both uh, GPUs and Docker at the same time. Oh, yeah. And I'm curious just how difficult is that to set up? Um, there is a, um, there's an NVIDIA Docker runtime. So uh, it's basically a, a plugin. I don't know how, I'm, I'm not a huge Docker user, so I don't know what the terminology is. But basically, you, you install the NVIDIA Docker runtime. And then there's uh, an option when you do Docker run uh, to use that runtime. And, uh, or maybe it's in the container. But uh, it effectively means that it loads the underlying device driver for the GPU when you run the container so that the applications in the container have access to things like CUDA. Um, so yeah, it's not, it's not difficult. Do we have any more questions? Yeah. Uh, given that the plan is to fit effectively move ETL to GPUs, which yep. I don't think any people do today a lot, are we also going to see just more memory on NVIDIA GPUs? So uh, there's a couple of things. Um, in GPU memory is growing. I mean, in the, the DGX2, for example, or if you, if you were to buy a single Tesla V100, they have 32 gigabytes. Obviously, if your data is really big, it's going to have to be staged in and out of that. So that there's a cost to that. Um, uh, but even with, with, with today's high performance interconnects, even with those copies, uh, I think you can still get uh, big speed ups compared to something like Pandas. Um, and uh, a big part of that is the fact that you can, if, you're, if you are chunking it up, then the software underneath can overlap transfers with computation on other chunks, and so it can be completely hidden. Um, the other thing is that um, in the high-end GPU servers, we have NVLink, which is a very high bandwidth interconnect between GPUs, and so we're able, able to peer-to-peer -peer access data on other GPUs in a node, um, so it basically amplifies the amount of memory that you have available. Um, and uh, another is that we're, we have a technology called unified memory, which is virtual memory for GPUs. So we can effectively page data in and out of the GPU automatically to, to, uh, to host memory. That's something that is available in CUDA today that we're not using heavily in RAPIDS yet, but um, we will be moving in that direction. Uh, you mentioned that you are sort of slowly migrating some of the functions and getting more complete yeah. uh, parity with pandas and uh, the ML stuff, uh, scikit. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a matrix of this or timeline or prioritization of what you'll be working on? Um, we do. Uh, it's not extremely well publicized. We're actually working, we had a meeting recently where we were talking about getting roadmaps on the Rapids website, at least rough ones. Um, but uh, the GitHub issues are a good place if you have a request. You know, if we don't hear about it, then we can't prioritize it. So, yeah. I had one. I, I apologize for the, the stupid vagueness of this question. Uh, I haven't been following PC specs for many years, and I don't. I works issued me a laptop. Can't remember what I've got. Is it the case that every modern laptop is going to have a GPU that'll be kind of compatible, or would would I know if I have this? Uh, so to run. On your laptop, um, you would need a NVIDIA GPU, in the case of Rapids, um, because it's built on CUDA. Uh, the other thing is, currently, we're Linux only, so you need a Linux cool. lap laptop. But um, 
you know, I, I use a MacBook and I develop completely remotely. Uh, you can run Rapids in the cloud. You can even try it out for free on Google Colab Collaboratory, um, which has GPUs that can run Rapids, Jeez. and it's free. So. I, I've never played games on a laptop, so I never actually looked at the sticker before. So yeah. I just figured I'd. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's all we have time for. So thank you again, Mark, for you. having such a great talk.